and welcome to the 2017 St. Paul Neighborhood Honor Roll Celebration. To get things started, it is my pleasure to introduce the Mayor of St. Paul, the Honorable Christopher Coleman. Well, good evening, everyone. Always great to see everyone gather to, uh, to celebrate all the great things that are happening across the city of St. Paul uh, and to recognize people that have really uh, given so much to their community. Uh, I say this every year, but as a person who kind of grew up through the district council system uh, and uh, District 7 and, and the Frogtown neighborhood, uh, woohoo, Frogtown, District 7. It was actually my, my wife when she was active in District 3 when we moved to the west side that, uh, that convinced me that uh, you can actually get a lot of stuff done on, on the local level and uh, somehow that convinced me to run for city council and the rest is history. Uh, but the fact of the matter is in the city of St. Paul we are so blessed to have so many people that come together to work on behalf of their neighborhoods. Whether it is planting community gardens, uh, helping out uh, fixing up the housing, uh, helping us propel the bike paths uh, forward across the city of St. Paul, helping us just kind of deal generally with neighborhood issues, uh, helping us spur on uh, our recycling program. Uh, and by the way, that it's not just the chips and the carts. We know where you are all of the time uh, in the city of St. Paul. Um, really pushing us to, to do more, uh, pushing us on our, on our sustainability policies, really helping us uh, envision the, the Ford site and what that can become. Uh, none of this is possible unless we are gathered together to talk about what it is that we love about our city, what we love about our neighborhoods, what we want to see uh, in, our, in the communities that we live. And we are just, uh, you know, we are head and shoulders above so many, more, so many other communities that I've had a chance to see uh, when we get together and do that. And quite frankly, now, more than ever, we need you. Uh, we are at a time where it will be neighbor to neighbor, uh, uh, community to community. It will be council members and mayors across this country. It will be neighborhood activists. It will be people that are actually, in spite of the, the, what is happening on a national level, it is all of us that will say, this is what we want for our community. This is what we want for our state. This is what we want for our country, and no matter what, those folks in Washington, D.C., okay, just one, uh, no matter what uh, uh, kind of vision they're trying to impose, we will create our destiny in our community. We will make sure that we move forward. So, I'll give, I, I, I didn't mean to get too political on this thing, but, you know, I figure it's fairly safe in this room. Uh, I, we, 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 can, we can give the president uh, credit for, uh, as you're saying to Deanna Foster, making neighborhood activists relevant again. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not sure that we were ever not relevant, but we certainly, uh, all of you are, are so much more so now. Uh, and I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Again, not as the mayor of the city of St. Paul, but as a, as a kid who was born and raised in the city of St. Paul, who raised his, his children in the city of St. Paul, uh, who has a deep and abiding passion for the city uh, and knows that it is made better because all of you are willing to roll up your sleeves, get to work, and get things done. Thank you for getting things done. And our next featured speaker is City Council President, Council Member Russ Stark. Good evening, everyone. And uh, for those of you who aren't immediate neighbors, welcome to Ward 4. Um, I remember being here last year uh, and helping to facilitate this event for the first time and talking about filling Kathy Lantry's big shoes. Um, and I was thinking about a year ago and how a year ago already feels like, I don't know, five years ago in terms of what's happened since then. Um, so rather than impersonating Kathy Lantry, I'm going to try to impersonate my younger, less jaded self from a year ago tonight. Um, see if I can pull it off. Um, I wanted to first thank the District Council staff members and uh, who pulled the event together this year. Uh, without them, there wouldn't be an event. Um, so thank you so much for that work. Uh, 
and also the University of St. Thomas for graciously hosting the event for I don't know how many years in a row now. Thank you. Uh, these are uh, indeed interesting times that we're living in and uh, as the mayor said, I think that connection neighbor to neighbor, community to community is going to be more important than ever. And what I particularly love about this event though is that the people that we honor are not seeking any spotlight or notoriety. Um, there might be a few exceptions out there, but um, you're simply doing the work in our community that's important to you and that's invaluable to the city of St. Paul. And in most cases, you're not even tweeting about it, which is kind of remarkable. Uh, breaking through the noise of media in our lives these days can be really hard, but that work of building community, helping one another, um, and, it, and it, honestly it feels like it's getting harder and harder because there's so much uh, swirling on around us, but I think particularly in this moment, these connections that we are making with one another are going to be valuable and important to us and we've got to keep working on them and strengthening them. So thank you for everything that you have done in the past year, and let's go out together uh, and do even more of all those things. So thank you very much for being here, and let's move on to the, to the awards. Okay, again, so we're gonna be doing this by community council and then individually. Um, city council members who are here or others who want to come up and share in photos and that kind of stuff, just kind of pay attention, be aware, pop up here whenever you need to pop up here. Um, so we'll start with uh, District Council 15, Highland Park. And our first... And our first honoree tonight, I'm going to be reading summaries of the descriptions of why these folks are being honored tonight. Fuller descriptions are in your program, so I encourage you to go home and, and read that and um, recognize what these people do and try to figure out um, how we can steal their ideas in our communities and uh, look for people like them in our communities to get them engaged as well. So first from Highland Park, Sue Stein. And instead of just complaining about pedestrian and bicycle safety on um, shared portions of Mississippi River Boulevard, uh, Sue convened a group of residents to actually improve it. The result, solutions that give residents and visitors a safer, more pleasant outdoor experience. Sue? Next is Tia Anderson. For eight years, Tia was a board member or president of the Highland District Council, which means she essentially dedicated countless hours on behalf of her neighborhood and its residents. Now she's doing the same thing on behalf of public art as treasurer of Friends of Highland Arts. Tia. And also from District 15, Elite Repeat. This is a business that whether through food drives, donations of unsold clothing, or donating profits to nonprofit groups, it is clearly one of those businesses that knows how to give back. Bravo. Okay, next is District 14, McAllister Groveland. And our first pair of honorees are Gary Ailes and Gene Allen. This, this group um, founded and continued to nurture the Friendship Club, which is a community service club that is now in its 53rd year of serving senior citizens, the environment, and those who are mentally and physically challenged, and in general, anyone who can use a hand. More than 15,000 students, 
parents, grandparents, and educators have participated as volunteers in Friendship Club activities, serving more than 30,000 individuals. Next is Alyssa Lean. And in an effort to celebrate the history and of, and of neighborhood buildings and to deter teardowns, Alyssa helped initiate the community's Century Building Project. Anyone who owns property that is already 100 years old or will turn 100 in the next five years is eligible to participate and honor their property with a custom plaque. <laughs> All right, next is Day uh, Dayton's Bluff, District 4. And our first honorees are Kevin Robinson and Vanessa Young. They are the founders of a group called A New BAM, which supports the academic success of youth and families through culturally responsive arts education, social emotional learning, and African American history and culture. Also from Dayton's Bluff, the Love Grows Here Wellness Center, especially Chris Olson Bingia, Brenda Olson Bingia, Kristen Wolin, and Ali Tunseth of First Lutheran Church. These women have grown the center from a 25 person breakfast to a Wednesday night gathering that marshals 40 volunteers to provide food, camaraderie, and services to more than 200 people a week. All right, District 10, Como Park, come on up. First honoree from my home district is Paul Seba. Paul saw a parking lot at Como Park Senior High, didn't like what he saw, and so raised the money to purchase and install banners that have converted a drab and uninviting site into a space that reflects the enthusiasm for learning that's going on inside the high school. Also, Deborah Persley. In her public role on the Como Community Council, Deborah is one of those reliable, behind the scenes, hands on volunteers who simply gets things done. Her most thankless task, she's the one who coordinates volunteers and senior citizen pickups during the annual neighborhood cleanup. And I don't even know how many of these folks are here tonight, but the final from our district is the Churchill Garden Stewards. Several generations of neighbors have planted and maintained a perennial garden in a gateway intersection of our neighborhood for more than 15 years. Then when street reconstruction destroyed the garden, these neighbors replaced it with an even larger native garden. They capped it off this year by recruiting 50 volunteers who installed more than 1,400 plants in one day. Wow. 
Okay, the next group of honorees are from District 16, Summit Hill. First, Maggie O'Reilly. When Maggie says, we can do this together, the emphasis is on the word together. Projects such as the playground and library at the Rondo Rec Center, the Martin Luther King Rec Center, the Palace Community Center, and the transforming central landscaping at the high school are all better off because of Maggie's ability to connect people. All right, our next is a group, Tor Cox, Rory King, Francesco and Matteo Marchio. These fellows represent student-powered service at work in the Summit Hill neighborhood. They spread mulch, dig holes, climb ladders, and lug boxes from the attic to the basement for friends and family who are less enthusiastic about heavy lifting. <laughs> Empty nesters who are downsizing describe these strong, athletic, good-natured teens as a human U-Haul <laughs> fueled by pizza. Okay, next, Hamlin Midway, District 11. And our first honoree is Andy Kirkus. Where don't you find Andy? Serving on a district council committee? Check. Volunteering for neighborhood events? Check. Clearing sidewalks in the winter so folks with disabilities can get around? Check. Clearing storm drains in the summer so the Mississippi River stays cleaner? Check. On the neighborhood honor roll? Check. And also from Ham Hamlin Midway, John Bailey. Now, folks tell me John has a long history of working on equity, access, and affordability issues. But I think from tonight and this day forward, we're going to know him as one of the people we can thank for starting the St. Paul Tool Library. Our next group of honorees is from District 1, which includes the Eastview, Conway, Battle Creek, and Highwood Hills neighborhoods. First honoree from District Wood, Ahmed Hersey. Ahmed is a founding member of the East African Community Link which is a group of neighbors who work to build trust across ethnic lines and income levels. Among his contributions, every year, Ahmed convenes a community gathering to help build the connections that make trust possible. Next, the Reverend Dr. Earl F. Miller. He's the founding pastor of Progressive Baptist Church, which has been a community center point for 25 years in advocating for education, promoting civic involvement, and supporting those of us in need. And it says that Dr. Miller is retiring, which probably means he's actually got more time to stay involved. <laughs> A 
at tonight's final honoree from District 1, Delena Zacharias, a founding member of District 1's Young Mentors Group and Youth Council, a backbone of East Side Pride Open Mic, an, an accomplished poet and student, and a good friend to many. What more can we say? Next, the honorees from District 6, the North End. First, Kirsten Libby, who is a Rice Street lawyer who is an activist in the North End Business Association, Rice Street Festival, Capital Improvements Budget Committee, and North End Development Team. Kirsten enjoyed the honor of being Grand Marshal in the festival parade and is an invaluable member of the East of the North End neighborhood. And next, Byron Toole. Byron, a senior naval instructor, has been the guiding force behind the JROTC program at Washington Tech for seven years. His cadets are frequent volunteers at North End events, and Byron leads by example, including filling leadership roles on the North End Business Association and in the Rice Street Festival. Our next honorees come from District 13, Union Park. First, David Skinner and Dale Grubner. Gruber, I apologize. Um, residents of Union Park know them better as Eli's sons. They are musicians who bring joy, laughter, energy, community, and a lot of technical and promotional know-how to neighborhood festivals. I think we found our MCs for next year. Where's the dad? <laughs> next from Union Park is Scott Bannis. Scott has provided his knowledge, legal expertise, and mediation skills to the community for over 15 years. That includes playing a key role in the merger of three community councils into what is now Union Park working on the complex negotiations over the University of St. Thomas's conditional use permit, and continuing to serve as a watchdog for residents on a number of community campus issues. Woo! And finally from Union Park, James Ebert. James is a professional photographer who has volunteered countless hours of his time and talent to shoot, edit, and share photographs of Union Park community events, businesses, and residents. We move on to District 7, Frogtown. And the honorees tonight are Jeff and Kristen Kidder. The Kidders are part of the spine of Frogtown. They have opened their beautiful corner lot, 
their home and their hearts to children from all over the neighborhood for decades. And you can read what else in the program. And our last group of honorees tonight from District 12, St. Anthony Park. First, Les Everett. Les is a longtime transportation and environmental advocate who has served for many years on the District 12 Transportation and Land Use Committees with passion, consideration, and dedication. Look at the paparazzi. <laughs> Next, another business, Workhouse Coffee Bar. <laughs> Workhouse has been in the neighborhood only since 2015, but it has already become an open, welcoming, and inclusive place that has woven itself into the fabric of St. Anthony Park and enhance the neighborhood's vibrancy and connectedness. Correction for the record, we're horse. <laughs> Criminal backgrounds always come back to haunt you. And last and not least, Regula Roussel. Apparently, we can say that Regula has been involved for a long time in a lot of things in the neighborhood, most recently in St. Anthony Park's Transition Town Initiative. But I think the best thing we can say is what neighbors say. Regula defines the very idea of neighborly. So that's it. Now you can begin celebrating. Can I say something? Can I say something? So this mic? If you don't know what Transition Town is, I have a tiny little uh, booklet that our group has made, and you can talk to me about it. It's a really neat program. <laughs> So as you can see, what does it take to make a difference in your neighborhood? You could be a longtime activist. You could be someone new or just getting started. You could play a very public role. You can be behind the scenes. You can be an individual. You can be a group or you can be an institution or an organization or a business or just a project. But all of you have one thing in common. You've made a lasting impact that made your neighborhood better, made our city better. And because of that, we are all better off. Thank you all very much.